Hi, this is Sami Zulfikar and you are watching Social Sciences. The 18th century was an era of many exciting discoveries for European men. Intensive sea works were uncovering a great deal of information that is playing an important role in challenging the traditional views concerning the origin and diversity of plant and animal life forms. Further, major advances in science, philosophy and technology rapidly altered the Europeans' perceptions of the world. The concept of a world at equilibrium was giving way to the concept of a world in progress. As advances in chemistry and physics were beginning to shore up public faith in scientific inquiry and analysis, archaeological breakthroughs challenged some of Europe's most established belief. In the early 19th century, Jake Washer, a French customs official and an immature archaeologist discovered some flint tools along with the bones of extant elephants in Somme's Valley. Despite the strong evidence uncovered by him that men had actually lived on earth long before the date provided by the Bible, uh, Borsher findings were largely ignored for many years. Later on, uh, the discovery of stone implements in Danish pit bog uh, confirmed an early theory that men had endured through sequential ages of stone, uh, bronze and iron. Charles Lyle also publishes geological evidence that the earth was considerably older than the Bible stated. It was difficult for any but the most stubborn to be contented with the biblical versions of the creation. Before the 19th century, there was little reason to believe that the orderly appearance of new living types had taken any more time than the duration of the recorded history. By the middle of the century, the principle of ge geological succession had made it nearly impossible for any educated person not to believe otherwise. In the first half of 19th century, the theory of racial determinism was proposed to account for the difference between various cultures. According to this theory, uh, formulated before the development of modern genetic science, the differences between people were attributable mainly to their varying racial backgrounds. Although the influence of the environment on human culture was considered, racial determinism was based on the premise that heredity is the main factor in determining a culture's potentials for its achievements. At the same time, theories of psychic unity were formulated in order to explain the many similarities between cultures. These theories held that the human mind was essentially uh, the same all over the world and that all people began to develop their cultures with the same psychological potential. In keeping with the 18th century belief in the doctrine of progress, both the racial determinism and psychic unity theories assume that men and his cultures changed and developed with the passage of time. It is believed that the concept of evolutionism was already uh, prevalent in the society uh, before the arrival of Charles Darwin's theory. Charles Darwin, in his book The Origin of Species, he gave the first formal statement of the theory of evolution. Although Darwin himself was concerned primarily with the way in which various species developed through biological evolution, his ideas gave new impetus to the concept of cultural evolution which had been roughly developed by earlier anthropologists. The anthropological evolutionist believes uh, that society and culture develop in a regular sequence of predictable stages. By studying social evolution, they hope to develop a science of culture that could formulate universal laws of human behavior and culture development. In looking for such laws, the evolutionists tended to emphasize the similarities among cultures rather than the differences. 
although they did not completely deny the importance of the exchanging of cultural traits between societies they believe that isolated societies tend to develop similar tools and institutions independently in the course of time the process whereby cultures develop similar features without cultural exchange is called as independent invention all societies pass through the same stages of evolution in a fixed sequence the evolutionist held that contemporary primitive cultures closely resemble an early stage through which their own culture has once evolved Victorian society was imagined to be the highest stage of the sequence through which less civilized societies were still evolving. Therefore, the evolutionists believed that the behavior of the savages could be compared to the early Europeans and their method is referred to as the comparative method. An important feature of this method was the belief that the behavior of people within culture can be explained uh, by reference to conditions earlier in their history which no longer prevails. The English anthropologist Sir Edward B. Tyler attempted to describe the evolution of culture in his work Primitive Culture, but his focus was primarily on the development of religion and not on technology according to tyler religion generally evolves from animism the belief in spirits ghosts and souls to polytheism which is the belief in numerous deities to uh, monotheism and that is the belief in a single god at its most advanced stage tyler claimed that religion is associated with morality questions of right and wrong are related to the idea of god tyler concluded that these progressive stages of development were the result of increasing rationality on the part of man louis henry morgan who is considered as the founding father of american evolutionary school of thought morgan a liar in roster Uh, New York was hired to represent the neighboring Iroquois Indian in a land grant dispute. After the lawsuit was resolved, Morgan conducted an ethnographic study of the Seneca Indians. Fascinated by the Seneca's matrilineal kinship system, Morgan circulated questionnaires and traveled around the United States and elsewhere in the world. gathering information about kinship system among native north americans and other native cultures this kinship research or which may be morgan's most enduring contributions to the comparative study of culture was published in his systems of consanguinity and affinity in 1871 six years later morgan wrote his famous book named as ancient society In keeping with the general tenor of the times, he developed a system of classifying cultures to determine their evolutionary niche. Morgan, like Taylor, used the categories savagery, barbarism, and civilization, but was more specific in defining them according to the presence or absence of certain technological features. The first stage is savagery. and according to louis henry morgan it is based on hunting and gathering societies the middle of three basic stages of 19th century theory developed by henry morgan holding that all cultures evolve from simple to complex system savagery barbarism and civilization civilization is uh, the term used by anthropologists to describe any society that has cities Further, he subdivided the stages of savagery and barbarism into three distinct subcategories: lower, middle, and upper. According to him, lower savagery um, is uh, the stage in which um, earliest form of humanity, uh, subsisting on fruits and nuts, can be observed. Middle savagery begins with the discovery of fishing technology and the use of fire. and upper savagery begins with the invention of the bow and arrow whereas lower barbarism begins 
with the advent of pottery making uh, middle barbarism began with the domestication of plants and animals in the old world and irrigation cultivations in the, in the new world and upper barbarism uh, begins with the smelting of iron and use of iron tools and in the last stage um, when we talk about civilization civilization begins with the invention of the phonetic alphabet and writing this is the classification of louis henry morgan i hope uh, you get the all points and if you have any questions you can ask in the comment section below last but not least we have herbert spencer uh, whose work is considered as one of the valuable inputs in evolutionary school of thought Tyler's approach was closely paralleled in the writings of Herbert Spencer. Although Spencer's emphasis was considerably different in principles of sociology, as Spencer traced the supposed evolution of marriage from polygamy through monogamy and stressing uh, the evolution of society towards increased specialization and complexity. Like Morgan and Tyler, Spencer envisioned the evolution of culture as taking place in distinct and definable stages. What the 19th century evolutionists were attempting to establish was a scheme for the historical progression of cultural forms. In seeking out universal cultural laws, the evolutionists hoped to explain the similarities and differences between cultures although the work of evolutionist was an important step towards finding natural causes uh, for cultural development they basic believe that all cultures pass through identical stages of development often led them to excessively generalize and overly simplified conclusions that's why many people criticize the evolutionary school of thought in the coming video we are going to discuss about the reactions to evolutionism stay tuned if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel